Oh, okay. We're going to talk about the cable, the coaxial cable that connects our transceiver to our antenna. This piece has to get all of the energy that's being output from the, the transmitter out to the antenna and needs to do it cleanly. Since this is RF energy, we have to treat it different. This is not just a piece of wire. A coaxial cable consists of, this is the outer shield. It has a center conductor. It then has a, typically a plastic or Teflon uh, area. This whole area in here is plastic or Teflon. That's the insulator and spacer okay to space it out to where we have a 100 percent foil um, insulation around this and then in the outer area i guess i should have done those in different colors the outer area has a tinned braid not every cable is, i only talk about these cables because this is the cable you should be using if you want to make your transmitter and antenna work efficiently. Now, one of the things that happens is this antenna, okay, between our transmitter, our antenna, this piece of cable that hooks those together is actually a tube of RF energy. It is tuned in this function. It's tuned by the size of the center conductor, the size of the insulation, and the outer braid. That makes it go to 50 ohms. It has to be circular like this. If the cable is not circular because somebody put it under a door and shut the door on it and flattened this cable down, when they did that to it, this is not wire. This can be very easily looked at as though it's a water hose. And if you take a water hose and you want to move something, water from one end to the other, and somebody stomps on it in here, you're not getting this stuff through. The exact same thing happens here. In, in reality, what happens is you put a bump in here, all of the energy that comes out here gets reflected back. If you should happen to, to misform the roundness of this coaxial conductor, you can actually stop it from working. Okay, light bumps, trying to bend it at 90 degrees, where this bend in the 90 degrees changes this round structure. You can look at the chart or as a rule of thumb, go to 10 times the diameter of the cable. Okay, if your cable's a quarter inch, okay, make sure that you, you've got that, a, a two inch kind of a bend radius, two and a half inch, but at any rate, that's what you want to do. Make sure it never gets crimped. So the best cables are going to have 95 to 98% okay, of a tinned braid shield, and then it's going to have a foil layer inside the tin braid shield that is going to give it 100%. There's a couple other functions that occur when you do a proper cable with the tinned mylar shield that goes inside is you change what is called ground friction within the cable so that the signal is bouncing as it meanders its way down the cable the signal is not bouncing off of a braided shield. It is bouncing off of a smooth surface on the inside, which is the inside foil shield. So when you use this, this cable, we talked about it, you can't crunch it up. The other thing you have to do is make a perfect connector on the end of this cable. When this cable comes down to its end, and we have some braid, we have some foil that's in here coming out. We then have our center conductor that comes out the other end. When this hooks on to our connector, 
that's going to be on the end of this, this connection has to be near perfect. To make this near perfect, we do pre-installed pre connectors. We use this, it's called a mini UHF connector. We do this for a reason on our cables. One, our machines can put the connector on perfectly. Two, if you're installing this on a boat, a 3 8 hole drilled anywhere allows this cable to be strung without having to, to take connectors off or do anything else. At the end of it, we have adapters for PL259 to go right onto it to connect in the, the way it normally would. One of the things that we do, and this is important with a cable in the antenna, we have antennas that both have no cable, we have antennas with cable. When we have it with a cable, the cable is already tuned into the antenna. We tune on an analyzer to make sure that this cable antenna system is exactly where we want it to be for the tuning. One of the nice parts about having all of our manufacturing in the United States and local here, and we are a custom manufacturer, is that when you order an antenna, you can order it with a custom length cable attached to it. If indeed you order a cable, an antenna, and the cable is not the exact length you need, you can do two things. If it's too long, you can roll up the extra amount of cable, do not cut the connector off, or if it is too short, you can order an extension cable. The extension cable is made as the other cable with many UHFs. It makes it easy to, to install. And the extension cables come in specific sizes. So if you need five feet more, you might have to order a 10 foot cable. But when you do this, don't cut it, don't change things. Take the cable and store it. Do not store it in this very neat little wrap that it comes in. It should be taken apart, the cable should be crossing itself at other directions, and that is far more better way to store it, okay, so that you don't affect the operation of the antenna, or you can wrap it neatly in, let's say, a figure eight, if you want to have everything look perfect. Just don't wrap it in a little coil. You're wrapped in a little coil, you are going to affect the performance of the antenna. This creates an electrical function known as a choke. Okay, a choke is basically an item that creates friction and poor current flow at these frequencies. So you don't want to put that in there like that. Okay, mess it up, make it look sloppy. I know that isn't the way installers work, but you will affect performance. The other item we have to look at when we're considering what cable we're using is how far the cable has to run. Irrelevant of how perfect this is, there's going to be some loss in this cable. We're trying to shoot uh, uh, energy down through this coaxial cable and get it from one point to the other. In every piece of stuff, we lose something. If we take this hose we were talking about up here and change it from 50 feet in length to 200 feet in length, guess what? The water flow out the other end of that hose will not be the same as when it was short. The same thing happens with one of these pieces of cable. What you will notice is that cable comes in multiple sizes. Okay, with each one of these will give a different amount of loss based upon length. What you want to look for when you're installing it is to have a loss between the transmitter and the antenna that is less than 3 dB. That's desirable. If you can get down to 1 dB, that's fantastic. There will be some loss, and every, every connector you put on also adds a little bit of loss. It's the reason that we do pre-terminated connectors. That gives you the very minimum loss. I thank you for having listened to any of my little tutorials here. I was trying to keep them pretty basic. We intend to do some more involved tutorials in the near future. And I would be happy to answer any questions 
um, that you have. If you can send them in, please send them to support at digitalantenna.com. And again, signing off, this is Dr. John Jones, and my PhD is in electrical engineering and physics. Thank you.